I don't think that leaders are born, but I think that leaders are made. People didn't like me, obviously, because I was like the teacher's How did you feel well. when you were called up as the mm-hmm. first student vice chancellor? Was, was there anything that you wanted to put into like law or no, like that day, do, you, do you you plan on going to politics like in future i don't want questions come from <laughs> hey legends welcome to the bos show episode two i have the first ever student vice chancellor for a day in Bowen university he was also the deputy senate president of the Bowen Association of medical students in the 2019-2020 session he was also the program coordinator of the Bowen Baptist Student Fellowship in the 2019-2020 session. I personally know him as someone who is spiritually sound and academically excellent. Let's welcome Olawale Mayomiko. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's, it's good to have you here. Thank you very much. Thank you, very much. Thank you for, for coming. Thank you very much, bro. I call him Paul. <laughs> He's the one. He's the one. He's the one that taught me. So you know, it's no mind prof me. teacher. Trust me. I'm learning from him every day. How have you been? Like, I know you just finished writing your ex. Like, you still have some exams, yeah, but like, well. yeah, almost done with your yeah. first professional. Yeah, he's a medical student also, so he's he's almost done with his first professional exam. Yeah. How how has it been? Stressful. For <laughs> last few days, I think yesterday and today, has been very stressful, but. Last two, in fact, not two weeks, last three months have been packed up. And the last two weeks, emotionally, been through a lot. Well, thank God, we are, we are fine. I'm still fine, right? I'm yeah, yes, fine. yes, you're very, uh, you, you know, <laughs> you, you know it's God. very fine. Just say it in thank the comment God. section. So, um, on today's episode, we'll be talking about student le- leadership and excellence as a student even while being a leader so um before we start um before you came to this granny 100 level you were you were like a pro- maybe because of your height what's your height <laughs> you know I'm, your height i'm six six three six three yeah. like he was a, this very prominent figure when we're in 100 level and like anywhere he goes everybody notices that he's around Just, do your height play a role in like making you stand out like even like um, when, you, when you were young, were you always tall amongst your... Yeah, actually, yeah. And for well, two things, I love to say it every time, my complexion and my height. Because everybody, it's either they identify me as, oh, the darkest guy in the class, or the tallest guy in the class. So yeah. they give me away a lot, sadly. Or, did I say sadly? It's a good thing. It's a good thing. It's a good, it's good. Being black, black and tall. Yeah. Oh my God. Or being black and tall. Anyone you want to be. <laughs> when did you first assume a leadership role? My life on Bowen University. In your life? Um, I was class rep in primary three. It's a right news yes. on the SA class. <laughs> exactly. Like. I, was, I was class rep. So I think that was my first time in yeah, primary three. And people didn't like me, obviously, because I was like the teacher's pet and I used to write news. I can imagine. I was, I was class rep too at one point when I, when I do write news on the because they come and flog me instead of like <laughs> When when you came to Bowen University, you since since then did you always have this drive to like school, secondary um, school? After primary school, cause I I I didn't finish my primary school, so yeah. I went to oh, secondary wow. school. Wait, so wait, when when did you leave primary school? From primary, I did primary three. Then I didn't complete my primary four. After first term, they moved me to primary five. Oh wow! So. And they had already selected prefects. It's prof, prof. So, oh my <laughs> prof. I, I had already select, they had already selected prefects then, so I just finished primary five with my seniors, then I moved to secondary school. Oh. So oh. secondary school, I I was a senior prefect in secondary school. When I came to Bowen, I didn't exactly count, okay, let me, like, but then I, I, I had this mentor in secondary school, a teacher, she used to, he, rather, he used to talk about how he was a student leader in school. He's talking about um, SUJ, I, SUG, SUG rather, mm. in federal schools. So I used to tell myself, okay, maybe when I get to university, I'm going to be, be nice. like student union government president or something. But I didn't really have that in mind when I came to Bowen. I just wanted to come and face my studies and, you know, be a medical doctor. Well, <laughs> and that, that was the plan, but, but that was the plan, they, were, they were bigger plans, obviously, for God you. God had bigger plans. <laughs> in 100 level, 
Yes, yeah, did you have any leadership role? No, not no, really, no. But, but then, okay, let's say position. There was no position as okay as a leader in quotes. Like it wasn't positional leadership. But then I always find myself like doing things that I don't know. I always just find myself driving taking, others, taking bringing people together. I I remember we met apart from the fact that we were classmates. We had this prayer group. Then yeah. That, we came, we came together. So then other things happened. Then I just always find, found myself like I, we had group discussions. Then as they divided us, I think the physics yeah, class physics or something, they made the group leader. So, so, but not any positional leadership. In quotes. You think there's, there's a trait that gives you off as a leader? Yeah. Um, or like it's, it's an inborn something? I've, I've always thought about that. I don't think that leaders are born. But I think that leaders are made. But I also believe in the fact that we can be co- unconsciously groomed to be leaders. For example, traits are what makes us leaders, not um, medical traits. I mean, virtues or characters, certain things that we see makes us leaders. So, for example, you um, many children, many people are born to born in homes where their parents are leaders, politicians, or leaders in one way or the other. They just unconsciously develop because they see what their parents are doing. They see that, okay, my father does this or my mom does this, and they develop those characters. So unconsciously, they find themselves being leaders mm-hmm. too, everywhere mm-hmm. they go. So I, I don't necessarily think that people are born. I think people assume that you are born leadership skills because many people who are born to leaders are also leaders. But I think it's more of a passive you know we can learn things passively so i think it's more of passive learning and unconsciously grooming oneself to become a leader and do, do, your, do your father or your mother play any role in you want to become a medical doctor yeah, yeah. yeah. My, my father is a medical doctor my oh. mom is a medical lab scientist oh, wow so, so i practically grew up in the hospital setting up but funny enough my siblings some of them like anything related to medicine my brother is doing studying engineering my sister is studying law Mm. So, but then I just found myself liking. They, funny enough, they never coerced me to study medicine or like, okay, you must study medicine. But then I just loved. Mm. I was always around doctors. I, I the first bunch. Yeah, the first one. Oh, that, that's that's so, even that he has to be a leader so. from birth. <laughs> like <laughs> first first one children are really trying. Like anytime you say first one child, just I just first just no, I'm not. Oh. But like I I can tell Sorry. any, any time. <laughs> Hey, they are the ones like always paving the, like my brother my brother is already a doctor yeah, and wow. like he's one always telling me oh this was they are going to face yeah, in medical yeah. school this was going to happen if you do this and this and oh you guys are really it's, trying it, it's instinctive because they'll beat you if you are not performing <laughs> your leadership roles like you should take yeah. care of your siblings and so unconscious you just want to take charge was there any time where you Kind of defaulted as a child when you meant like maybe take care of your siblings that you can remember that <laughs> many times. Can, can you can you i i think one that stuck to my brain was one time i was sick i have this because my my dad is a medical doctor if you have, once you mentioned that you are sick in my house you are bound to take injection yeah. so i was avoiding that i didn't tell my parents that i was sick but i was very sick so i was i was sleeping in the afternoon and my sister was very young, she was hungry, my mom was not around. I think she traveled. My dad dad was in the hospital. So my sister came to me that she wanted to take noodles. So I just um told her, go away, go away, I'll, I'll cook noodles for you later. So my dad came and met her crying and I was in the room sleeping. So oh, wow. and my, my sister is my you know female children and their dads now. <laughs> so my dad came and met me sleeping like, Why are we not cooking this first? He didn't even listen to me, he just slapped me. And I was so weak, so when he slapped me, I landed on the floor. And hit my <laughs> on the floor. Oh wow, wow! And wow. when my mom came, she was she was angry. She was screaming like, "Why did you beat my son?" And it was so dramatic that day. Well, that's I remember. Oh, wow. And many more. It's not it's not easy. It's not easy. <laughs> yeah. Now let's talk about your day as as a vice chancellor. How did you feel when you were called up as the mm-hmm. first? student vice chancellor the only thing i can i can say or remember is i felt this strange and overwhelming mm. burden like it's done on me like okay you're actually responsible for all these people <laughs> like and going university the way it is is 
you go to the chapel we have we have the university worship, worship center you get to see like almost everyone even though some people are at home at that point because of covid but then you still get to see the number of people like you are in quote responsible for and we are told that day that anything that you approve or you do that day is like becomes law or is bound to happen yeah. because you are the vc so i was just scared like Okay, you and don't, I really did this. You, you, didn't, yeah. you didn't want to mess up, you, did, you exactly. wanted to perform at the same exactly. time. And then I didn't want to mess up in my in quote speech. Even the funny thing is, I didn't prepare any speech that day. <laughs> I, we're so busy and into the work that there was no time to even write anything down. So I just, as I was sitting that day, as I was sitting on my seat, I was just thinking, okay, what am I supposed to say to these people? And when I finally spoke, everything I said was different from what I planned to say. <laughs> <laughs> to say. Uh, and I was mindful of not like saying anything that would touch anybody any in any way. So uh, I was just so we were watching your words and yeah. trying to. And wait, I was wait. conscious of the fact that they were recording this thing. They were going to post <laughs> on YouTube. Oh, it's, it's on YouTube. Yeah, you see, it's on YouTube. Yeah, you said um they said anything you like put as a oh, law yeah. like would stand. Was there anything you put down as a law that uh. day? Um, I got to realize that the way ma- university management works is that the VC is not like, he doesn't act in isolation, he or she rather, um, I'm mindful about gender, please. he or she doesn't, doesn't act in isolation, so you can, you have to, everything still passes through um, Senate, passes through government council, mm. so you can't exactly just say, okay, I want food to be 20 naira per spoon and to be so, that's to pass through other bodies like I said Senate and government council so, so, to get approval. So that law cannot be passed in a day. In a day, no. Can't. So that means you can't exactly pass, pass a, law a law in, in a day. day. But there are some but, things but, you can do like approving things, like they can bring okay. things to your table. As much as long as it's not um it is within budgetary limits. And then there's a certain amount amount that the V C can approve. Once it exceeds the amount then or that's day, or like um, in session. Not in yeah, in a in a once V C approves anything, it goes to the boss and when it comes to finance and the boss will check, okay, is this thing still within budget limits? There, there are budgets for everything. So if for example you come for stationaries now and V C approves it or repairs and V C approves it, once the boss bossa says, Okay, for this month we are already over the budget limits, it will decline and send a memo back to the V C like, Okay, sir, we can't approve this mm-hmm. because it's already over the budgetary limits. Oh, and wow. but there are some amounts that even if it's within budgetary limits, the VC still can't approve until there is approval from government council. It's the way it is. <laughs> it, is it is what it is. <laughs> Very complicated. Yeah. Like and the, the funny thing, many people, many process. students won't understand all these that things. That this is what is, is really what happening. Really happen. it, was, there, was there anything that you wanted to Put into like law or oh, like that day, yeah. that day, like like what, like yeah, what? I, we had so many ideas. Like we came to the office like oh, today, students are going to have lights throughout. <laughs> food is going to be like we can even give people free food. We planned a lot of things like okay, approve maybe students have been clamoring for some things. For example, in Boy University Teaching Hospital, some students um sent some things. They they've been clamoring for for a while. There are many complaints yet, so we try to get complaints from students. Okay, what do you want? Today is student day in court, so we wanted to do things that will make yeah. students happy in a way. But then we realized that there are so many protocols to follow to get things done. We even were even thinking about doing something monumental, like maybe building a student center or some, something. But then again, we realized that, okay, to do these things, you have to go through a certain um process and that would definitely take more than 24 hours so at the end of the day you can remember that we ended up just saying okay, we extending we extended the time for electricity yeah. to return on the gen for a little longer then we did we were able to achieve some things in Boy university in hospital some repairs and they got some things over there we realized we couldn't make like major changes so like so like it, it, it did so short for it's too it's short. Too it was short. too short, yeah. It's too short. Like, do you think a week is reasonable for? Yeah, you? so many things can be done in a week. But that means you have to pressure people to to work to work during like that week. Yeah, to work during that week. 
and get things and probably see you could call 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 like an emergency senate meeting or our hopefully maybe that week will be meeting for governing council or something and then to just mm. fall into place you can see that being a student or being a vice chancellor then put it that way is yeah. not it's not it's not as glamorous as we all as think it is yeah. it's work it's a work. lot of work your tenure as a program coordinator uh-huh. in the Buen Bate Student Fellowship, how how was it? Oof. I do, I don't think I miss <laughs> I don't think I miss those times. Because <laughs> every day was stressful. Every day was stressful. Even though, um, like my presidents will always say, then that at the end of the day, it's about the impact. When we look back now, the only thing we could hold on to is oh, we, we impacted a lot of people. We like we got results. And till today, when you still move around, you still see people that tell you, okay, like you helped me in this way, or you did this program, that was this program that helps me in this way, and a lot of testimonies like that. So you get um, some level of um, fulfillment from hearing those kind of feedbacks. But it was very stressful, although it was also easier because I was a stand program coordinator before that year. Oh, okay. So and and fortunately the person that was program coordinator before me became my president. So oh. the relationship was there and president and, and program coordinator have to really get along because the work is just intertwined. So okay. it made it easier in terms of administrative duties. Obviously, in terms of execution, we still have to do a lot of things. And many times, when after BBS7, I started coming to the hostel earlier, I started staying in the hostel. People were just looking at me like, so you can only stay in the hostel. <laughs> why, why you in the hostel? Times, either I, I leave as early as 6.37 a.m., come back as late as 10. Nights that I don't come back by 10, I will sleep outside. Or uh-huh. sometimes the security men already know me. I'll knock around 11 or 12. Or was it was and it was a test of how I could balance things up, like balance every area of my life, especially academically. The fact that you were doing all these things and like you were you and your intercalated the other for any time physiology, which is obviously I think one of the most stressful intercalated programs or the most stressful intercalated programs. How were you able to like find time to like read to your projects, go to your seminars and all those things together with did, did, did your department know that you were an executive and... Yeah, some lecturers knew, but they didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> the students first, oh, nobody okay. cares at the end of the day. What, was there any time where you had to say, I'm a student first and... and yeah, like, definitely. Leave, 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 or... Oh, let me take that back. Some lecturers cared actually. Because I remember there was a time we had a competition outside school. I think Calabar or Potakot, I can't remember. We should have traveled. And they wrote like three or four tests in that week. It was a whole week. Let's go for a competition. So when we came back, the lecturers they rearranged like I did my test in their offices. So mm-hmm. as they understood and yeah. So I take that back. Some lecturers <laughs> some <kids. laughs> like did you being a leader affect your studies? Well I would say it affected my study time. Let me okay. use that word affected because um i i used to if i'm not in class i'm probably reading or if i have meetings i i had a plan for each day when i they was supposed to go i'm someone that is obsessed with planning like um, i power obsessed with planning I'm, i just finished my mb i'm already thinking about my plans for after mb and plans for boots and teaching the teaching hospital and the like so i'm obsessed with you know there are different kind of personalities there are some people that once yeah, they lose track of their plans they become so there are some days I'm that i have a plan for the day and a meeting will come in or maybe we see someone else or something and it will just destroy my plan and when that happens it's it touches my brain and i just lose some control so i learned to adapt to not exactly following my plan so I had always had plan A, plan B, and I learned to adapt fast. Like if anything happens to my plan A, immediately I know okay, this is what I'm supposed. Okay, mm. I have a meeting now, so I'll attend my meeting now and read from this time to this time. It didn't affect my reading so much, but there are some days like Sundays we used to have a series of meetings. So I'll, 
I used to call Sunday Day of the Lord. I won't <laughs> even bother to read on Sundays. Once I come back, I rest. Then, as any as possible, on Monday morning, I'm off. I read before class. Then, then also, I, I just, I, it was just a test of all the things I had learned. I, I learned about time management. It was just a test of that. Learning to place my priorities. What are the important things, necessary things, things that are not so necessary. Mm. I stopped. I'm a Chelsea fan. I stopped watching football. Uh, Sadly, I you, you, you won't have to shoot this video at this time because of Chelsea watching yeah. against Leeds. Yeah, <laughs> oh I had to God. stop watching football. I had to stop attending some programs and unnecessary meetings. I cut down a lot of excesses so I could focus on my leadership position, my academics. So I still maintained my reading time, even if it had to sometimes be in the middle of the night. I still made sure that sometimes I stay in the office, like in the sector, at late into the night, so that that I didn't come to the hotel sometimes. I'll just read overnight, overnight there, yeah. and I had the privilege of being able to stay outside, so <laughs> that was good. <laughs> so I just tried to find the balance and still maintain. So I won't say it affected my academic life, but affected so my like, study time. Um, you talked about time management and planning and all. Like, how do you do you physically write it out? Yes, and... every single day. Oh, okay. Yes, like so seven you... a.m. Wake up by six or at five. Any time I want to wake up, do this by this time to this time. I record. I am accountable. I account for every time of day. You have like yeah. a book or like yeah. a. Yeah. I have like a book for it. Oh, that's that's very nice. So. You, you can pick that up and, and start planning your days that way. I also do it too, like, it's my, my, my little... Oh, wow. <laughs> I write it down every, every single thing like that. I just... My lent, I learned recently that some people don't do well with planning. Yeah. Uh. I learned... I, I was listening to some podcasts. Apart from that I learned, I just listened to some people. This, I was listening, listening to Temi Otedola and Mr. Izzy's yeah. podcast, and they are <laughs> opposite people. Uh, personalities. Timmy mm. likes planning. She's obsessed with planning. Mr. Easy doesn't do well with planning. In fact, it's when he plans that he has issues, issues. following through with whatever he wants to do. So I, was, I don't I was know how that works. Podcast, I've like, always thought planning was like the ideal thing until I learned that some people don't do well with planning. I, like I was, I was with Timmy here, away, okay. like some some weeks ago, and he told me too that like he does not, he does not need to write all this. He just keeps a mental list of exactly things I want to do yeah. at, at this time. And he just goes and like he does them like okay yeah, this this what I'm doing and then um I'll, I'll ask you this question now podcast or music for me yeah music music because there are sometimes okay. for example when I'm reading I can't be listening to podcasts so music uh, does it for me so so okay you listen to music while you're reading how do you listen to music while you're reading not every time there are sometimes that there are different types of reading I okay. I got an, an, an expert <laughs> on that you can check his channel for YouTube channel subscribe and like. I'm, I'm doing this now. I'm always going to do it. So, so you can, yeah. There are different. Sometimes you just want to like go through stuff or mm-hmm. just want to like something chill. Yeah, yeah. something chill too. So. But then when I want to do active reading, I would, I would need total silence. And so I want mm. to use. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, what what kind of music do you listen to? So alpha. I think that's in um, Timmy Otedola. Um, okay, okay, so that's, that's okay. the yeah. podcast now. Yeah. I think that's the name. Oh, I wanted to ask, apart from like their podcast, you listen to any other podcast? Uh? Yeah, I'm, I'm not really a podcast person, but I'm very selective. Oh, okay. I only listen to a few. Um, okay. I follow um, Feladroto's podcast, even though he has not been like, so constant about it. So, but I just follow, when he was doing a podcast series, I followed it. Deji, Debola Deji Kromi. I followed a podcast series when she had one. Oh, D D K. D K. Yeah. Then Fela Drote. I mostly listen to him on YouTube. I as IG live programs. Mm-hmm. Then I love sports, so I have this guy, um, George Benson. He does he has a podcast series, George Benson football series. I. Yeah, so yes, yeah. Does he does he have a video? Yeah, he has, he's on YouTube. Too. Okay, YouTube. In fact, his channel is even more popular than me. Yeah, the podcast. Oh. So, so to music now. Who, who, who is your go-to person in music? Uh, I actually don't really have a go-to person in music, but it depends. I, I, I love music across board, so it depends. I could have, I have different sections. We check my phone. 
for gospel i like anything chilled soul music r&b generally so for gospel people like or groups like you song and i recently fell in love with marvel's marvel city so um Chan- chandler moore i think that's the production of his name chandler moore mm-hmm. then um Ty Tribet, travis green then um nigerian music I like to like Kobam Sasha, Chiu Kipusha, Kobam Sasha, Asha. Um, who else? I think I think that I'm 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 not I'm a nomad when it comes to music. I can go to anywhere. Any, uh, That's you. why the music so, is chilled. And yeah, not, chilled and, and not. not I don't really like all them like Amali. Jamming. Because I don't know how to dance, so I prefer chilled music. I just chill. Then. All right. I know. Okay, so you already mentioned Fela Durutui and. And who again? And DDK. Oh, DDK okay. yeah, is there is there any other person like whose leadership, oh, like authority, you follow, something like that? Yeah. Do you mean like just like a role model or someone like I like or mentor or role model or just random or like people that just? Okay, just mention like three, three people. Maybe one role model, one mentor, and someone who oh. you like follow. Okay. Um, okay, so people that I follow, I'll just mention Samade Emi, okay. um, Miles Moro of Blessed Memory, is still alive, like we'll say, yeah. um, John C. Maxwell, those three people, when it comes to leadership, those three people, um, then in this, because I mean, I like politics, so this scene of politics. Trust me, no Nigerian is there. There's no politician. No Nigerian politician is there. When it comes to the political scene, I would say, um, um, even Paul Kagame, yeah, Paul Kagame. I I like his style of leadership. Even the also every year, every year, he's president of. Forgive me. He's president of is it Zambia or Zimbabwe? I don't know why I've just forgot. I was actually thinking about it before you asked. But don't worry, fact check. I will check it. And you check it out. You put it there. I don't know why I just forgot now. Um, Then, the people I like are controversial. Barack Obama, Bill Clinton. Okay. They are controversial people. But I I study them. I'm currently reading a book by Bill Clinton. Just his um, his biography now. Yeah. So, like name is biography. No, no, no. the title is just Bill Clinton. Oh, okay. Like, okay, Bill Clinton. It's a very large book about his everything, the scandal, everything about his career. We all know about the scandal. That's why I said they are controversial people. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. But in Nigeria, apart from Feladote, who interesting is no longer a politician. I don't think there's anybody. I like um, this senator, common sense senator, mm-hmm. isn't he? Um, this the owner of Silverbed. I don't know. If I forgot his name. Now. Is the CEO yeah, of Silverbed? Check it. We check it. We check it. Uh, I don't know. If I forgot his name now. But I, I, I like him. So I think he's the only Nigerian politician I like. Do, do, do you, do you, plan on going to politics like in future? I don't want politicians to come. <laughs> <from me anymore>. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I like politics. So let me give you a political answer. I like politics. <laughs> Let's see what God will do. We will see later we'll see on. <laughs> yeah. oh, okay. Nobody should come to my head now. I'm medical school. <laughs> you mentioned a book you were reading. Was there was there any? What book would you say has had the most impact? Oh. On your leadership style and your personality. That would be in charge by Miles Moore. In charge. Yes. Oh. I've read the book like. Maybe ten times. <laughs> yeah. Oh. In charge by Miles Moore. I think I should start revisiting books, so because like most times when once I just read, if I, I either just write down notes mm-hmm. and like I don't go back to the book, I just look at the notes over and over. In fact, you know? I formed an habit of going back to books last year too, because almost about forty percent of the books I read last year were books I had read, I had read before, so I just mm-hmm. read them again. But like COVID nineteen, I felt I just felt the need to. Learn, we learn some things. So, when, when, when this, this is the last question I should ask. When you were a leader, like you were able to send it, um, 
of bums yeah. deputy senior president, deputy senior yeah. of bums and also did you, did you have time to read books there then also when i was program coordinator yeah w- read and books in like outside of medical books like did you yes yes but what i just do is every year for example this year i knew i was writing my mb this year mm. so my goal for this year like for the first three months i knew i was going to be preparing for mb so I, I think i only set i set the goal of three books one book per month and i was able to finish january i was able to finish two in february i was able to finish one in sorry two in january one in february so i knew mm. okay even if i didn't because I, I started my MB in March, March 1st, so I knew I was probably not going to be able to read as much in March. So mm-hmm. I already have like in my spirit, in my spirits, like I feel like okay, I've achieved my goal yeah, for the first three months. So now, what what, what, what three books did you read? Um, I read um, Attributes of a Successful Person by Pastor Dr. Paul Enche. Mm, okay. Then I read um, this Bill Clinton book. Mm-hmm. Then, um, why does this year seem so far? Because I read, I read them as PDFs. Um, Zikora, Chimamanda Adichie. Uh, okay. You know, I've not read any Chimamanda book. I think we. I've read all. I read Chimamanda Adichie. I love her. Have a yellow sun, Zibet. Yeah. Okay. Have a yellow sun. Things around your neck. Things around your neck. I think those are the three I read. Why? Why you should all be feminists? I've not read that one. Then. There's another one about feminism. She has written, I think, six books, including Zikora. Mm-hmm. Just mm-hmm. check out more of her work. Yeah. So. She will lure you to Chino Achebe. <laughs> you should. Yeah, yeah. Their writing is. I don't know Very to me, so I think they are similar. She also. Mm-hmm. Okay. Again, I'm about to ask you PDF or paperback? Paperback. That's why I can't remember <laughs> the books I read because I read PDFs. I read PDFs. Okay, so uh, okay, so paperback okay. does it every time. So you prefer writing things down also, like you prefer instead of type type out work, like instead of you typing out your work, you prefer writing it down. Also. No, if I'm I because I write, if I want to write now, I I, I prefer street, typing. Street yeah. typing. But if I'm writing like. I can't make notes. I know of my some of my colleagues are. I think you do that. You make notes on your laptop. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can't. I prefer writing. Writing it down. Because the way I remember things, like it's like a photographic in a photographic way. So, so I remember yeah. things the way I write them down, or the way I see them in textbook. Yeah. So just typing for me. I think my hand and my brain has a connection. So when I. Well, like, you see the zips that way. I type for you. I think you are used to that. I mean, but like, but I, I just, I just, I'm not really, I, really used to. It, but I just started like yeah. doing it like last year yeah. during that COVID period. period. I was like, I think it would be stressful to write an essay or article first before typing. Before typing. So people stress. do that now. Like, I see some people like write down the. The only thing I can write is maybe my line of thought. Corrections. Talks. I can write down my line of thought. Like, yeah. okay, yeah. this is what I want to put in first paragraph. Just key points. Then yeah, develop okay. them. I thank you so much for coming here. This, this has been a wonderful time. I hope you have learned something about student leadership and even remaining excellent as a student, your academics. Um, do you have any, as 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 you are rounding up, do you have any single word of advice you give anyone who wants to go into student leadership um, or leadership as a whole? Well, student leadership. Even the Dutch they will do it for the right reasons. And for student Dutch I would say, um, don't go into it for selfish reasons. What I, I think something that helped was, I went into it because I was passionate about leadership. And I saw it as an avenue to just develop myself and learn. And if I would tell anybody to take anything out of student leadership, apart from every other thing you learn, is networking. Networking. I I met a whole lot of people, like people that I never thought I would meet from my my service as a student leader. Met people, trust trust me, from different calibers of society, different um, people that would you would definitely need in future that would help you. 
mentors that have helped me in so many ways. I met them via service. So I think I think that's one thing everybody should look out for. Networking at every avenue. And if you get there, if you are with people, never hesitate to ask them for their contacts, their email address, all those things. Even though it you may seem like a people pleaser or something, you know what you're looking for. You're, you've not blown now, so <laughs> and they've blown, disturb them. Yeah. As, as you said that now, so can, can, can we can we know your, like, okay, are you a social media person? So that we know, like, um, you, you don't just, want to reach out to I'm you. I'm just developing my, <laughs> my career in that field. So, like, how, how, I how? I did it at last, but yeah, that last year. So, what's, what's your handle? Nineteen costume. Mayor, and that's Kolawa. You don't even know my handle. Okay. Oh, okay. Mayo, M-A-Y-O. So, like, if you want to contact him, hit him up on Twitter, DM him, disturb him too, because he's so young, blown like me. <laughs> ah, so then, you know what I was saying to that to you know? <laughs> <laughs> So, guys, till next you time. Know what you know, check my bank account. <laughs> uh, next time, till next time, guys.